The Build and Burn is a 16-week periodization science-based program for the beginner, intermediate, and advanced level person. Using the most biomechanically efficient exercises to build muscle with the least amount of wasted time, energy, and injury risk. This program can be done in a commercial gym or at home using at least a bench, dumbbells, and elastic band. Nutritional guidance included. And that keeps it fresh. It keeps the muscles fresh. It keeps them growing. Start building muscle efficiently. Let the real gains begin. Can you define momentum? Yes. Um, momentum is, is a form of energy. It's a form of force, right? That um, uh, if, you were, if you were trying to, let's say, move a piece of furniture, uh, you know, and your objective is to try to accomplish the task, and the task is greater than your muscle force will allow, you might try to you know, swing it. You might try to, you know, get it, you know, swinging and which in effect reduces the amount of force that you would need. So for example, let's just say you're going to do a strict standing barbell curl and you don't move your back at all. You, maybe you keep your back against the wall and you just pull, you bend your elbow with only the force of the bicep, nothing else you'll say, okay, well, uh, the strength capacity of my biceps is this, right? It's, let's say it's to do three repetitions with an 80 pound barbell. Let's just say, for example. Um, and, and then your training partner says, you know, uh, I'm, I'm going to do it a different way. And so he starts, you know, using his back and his legs and he can get a hundred pounds for six reps, right? So you think that maybe your form is wrong and maybe you should use his form. And so then maybe you start doing the same thing. What, you, what you've actually started to do is you've used your back and your legs to initiate momentum, to basically throw the weight upward so that the weight is moving upward partly by bicep strength, but partly by way of the momentum that's created by your back and your legs. So the question we have to ask ourselves is, is your bicep working any harder? The answer is no. Right, you've already identified the strength capacity of your bicep. Maximum capacity for you at this moment is 80 pounds for three reps. That's a fact, right? So you have to ask the obvious question. If I'm able to use more weight by using different form, how can you do more effort than max effort, right? So you can't, right? So something else has been brought into the equation. And what you've actually done is you've added and subtracted. You've added 20 pounds and subtracted that 20 pounds by using other muscles. So at the end of the day, in fact, you might've actually assisted more than 20 pounds so that maybe your bicep is even less loaded, even though you're using 20 pounds more. So needless to say, it's completely foolish to spend more energy to get the same or less benefit. That's like saying, I'm gonna spend more money to get the same amount of reward. So momentum is not useful for if the goal is muscle growth. Right. If the goal is muscle growth, the only thing that matters is the uh, amount of effort that the, that the muscle is, is, is made to produce, period. The muscle does not know how much weight you're using. It does not care how much weight you're using. It does not know whether other muscles are assisting or not. All it knows is how much force it has to produce in order to create the movement in the joint that it controls. So in the case of the bicep, you know, the elbow is the only thing your bicep is concerned about. How much force does this have to produce in order to get that elbow to bend, right? So that's the mistake that so many people make in bodybuilding uh, or any kind of actual fitness classes. They try to measure how good the exercise is that they're doing by how much weight they're using. And they're ignoring whether or not the muscle is working at its maximum capacity. And not to say, by the way, that every muscle has to work to maximum capacity, right? But it, but it has to, it's going to respond to what it feels, which means you need to focus on what your muscle is feeling, not necessarily, you know, whether, and by the way, you, I'm sure you've seen, we've all seen people using not only momentum, but partial range of motion, right? They'll do little itty bitty motions for curls, you know, they'll just, 
and you see it more often in calves. It's like, again, the muscle doesn't know anything other than what it's feeling. It knows full range of motion and it knows percentage of effort. Those are the two things it knows. So if you're getting full range of motion or mostly full range of motion and you're getting you know, a, a, a significant amount of effort, then that's all that matters. Why work harder than you need to? Okay. Can momentum be useful for different disciplines? Well, look, I mean, if you were a power lifter or not a power lifter, but an Olympic lifter, right? Olympic lifting requires, relies on a certain amount of momentum. For those of you that don't know what an Olympic lift is, there, there are two lifts. There's the clean and jerk and the snatch. The snatch is when the bar's on the ground and you squat down and you put your hands very wide on the bar and then you stand up with a squat and then midway through the squat, you throw your back up and you throw the bar, you throw the bar up and over your head. And at the same time that you're throwing the bar, you drop underneath it. So the bar gets up so high and not high enough to get to the top of your hands unless you lower your body. So that you could never do that with sheer muscle strength. You could never do that without momentum. Um, same thing with the clean and jerk. They pull the bar up and then they drop underneath it. And they're not pulling it. They're throwing it with their back and their legs. And then it's, it's basically flying up on its own. And then you get underneath it and you catch it. Then you stand up and then you lower yourself down into a half squat. And then you stand up abruptly. And then again, you drop underneath it. So, but that isn't, Olympic lifting is not for the purpose of muscle development, right? The purpose of muscle development does not require anything more than X amount of effort on the part of the muscle. It doesn't know or care how much you're lifting. When you're doing a kettlebell swing, the kettlebell swing also relies on momentum. But again, you, you know, we can dissect the kettlebell swing and say, okay, what muscles are involved and to what degree are they involved? And more importantly, can we do what this exercise is doing more wisely? That's the, at the end of the day, that's what we have to ask ourselves is, is this the wisest way the most efficient way to accomplish the goal of working this muscle or that muscle. So uh, the last point on this is that people lean forward when they do a squat, they pretty much have to, to keep their balance. If you look at someone from the side and you realize that their torso is leaning farther forward than their lower leg is, and their torso is longer than their lower leg is, that means the magnification that their lower back is getting is significantly more than the load their quadricep is getting. So for all of these reasons, the idea that you're gonna favor a squat because it's a compound movement, not realizing there's neurological issues, there are physics issues, and then there's these you know weaker links that are being compromised. In other words, that you could be injuring your spine. It is just foolish. You're better off looking at each individual joint function and muscle function and maximizing those if your objective is to have a totally strong body and a totally developed body.